Minnesota State Capitol is the seat of state government, housed in an historic and beautiful building. It is also a history in portraiture, housing the collection of gubernatorial portraits spanning more than 150 years. The official state portrait of Mark Dayton, the 40th governor of Minnesota, was recently unveiled in a ceremony held in the rotunda. It hangs in the west wing of the Capitol on the ground floor in a corridor with Governor Tim Pawlenty, Governor Jesse Ventura, and around the corner, Governor Arne Carlson. These are all portraits, though, paintings, not photographs. Why is that? Well, the importance of uh, oil on canvas is the permanence because if you had a photograph, that's going to fade over time. And so the, the goal of the Minnesota Historical Society and the Capital Area Architectural Planning Board is to have a piece of art that's going to be there for decades and generations to come. So you want something that's a traditional uh, oil painting on a canvas. These paintings differ remarkably over the years. Uh, Alexander Ramsey, Henry Sibley, those are small paintings. Some, like Governor Arne Carlson, are quite large. What explains the differences in the size and how these paintings are, are the decisions that are made. Yeah, that's a really interesting story to tell about the portraits because what you are looking at is you're looking at portraits from the 1850s all the way up to the present day. And so you get a really good story about art history and how portraits were done. So you have very traditional, very formal paintings from the 1850s to the 1890s, early 1900s, the traditional governor with the hand in the in the coat, you know, that type of thing. And then you start in the 1930s having a little bit more personalization of the governor. So Floyd B. Olson was the first kind of a little bit more um, less formal painting. He's portrayed standing in front of the Capitol. The Capitol's behind him and he's holding a microphone of a, for uh, the radio. And he was one of the first governors to really use that technology to have these statewide conversations over the, over the radio. So that was kind of a nice little kind of a part of his administration as a governor and a part of his personality, very charismatic, very outgoing. I noticed in Governor Arne Carlson's portrait there are two butterflies, a blue and a yellow, and a yellow bird. Also in uh, Governor Jesse Ventura's, there's Rodan's The Thinker, and there's a train in the background. What do these symbols indicate? Well, it really typifies some of their achievements as a governor. The process for the last several decades is the, the governor, when, when they finish their term of office, gets to select their portrait artist and also what they want to be portrayed as or how they want to be remembered in that portrait. So they work with the artist to work out some of those details. And so once again, if you look at some of the more recent portraits from the, in the last 30, 40 years, you do have characteristics or things that identify that person's interest. So we can go back to El Cui he has horses in the background. Well, he's an avid horse rider and it has been his whole, whole entire life. So those are his horses that are being portrayed in that, in that painting. And you have Arne Carlson as the butterflies. One is a, a butterfly you find in Sweden. One is a butterfly you find in Minnesota because he has Swedish roots. He's a Swedish American descent. So, so it, it makes the things very personalized for these uh, governors to have those stories told in the portraits. As you view all these governors' portraits, uh, some are seated at or near a desk, some have books or flags. Governor Tim Pawlenty and Governor Mark Dayton, as is Governor Floyd B. Olson, outside. How are the settings chosen? Well, that's a, a kind of a conversation between the artist and the governor. So they can uh, pick and choose what they want as their setting. And uh, for instance, with Pawlenty, you know, that typifies this was the center of, of government, this is where he worked, this is where all of his uh, achievements were made was in that capital. Uh, with uh, Governor Dayton, it's really acknowledging you know, the importance of the state capital, but he was also the leading official that led the preservation, restoration, repair of the capital. So that's a part of his legacy. That's something that you want to be remembered. Not only did you serve here, but it's a place that you help preserve for future generations. One portrait is distinctly different from the others, and that's the one of Governor Rudy Perpich, because it includes his wife, Lola. What's the story behind that? Well, the tradition for any governor portrait is to have just the governor as the person in that portrait. Uh, what uh, Governor Perpich had served non-consecutive terms, so he did have his first official portrait on display here, but because he had served a second term, he wanted to have that first portrait and a new portrait on display in the Capitol. And the Capitol Area Architectural Planning Board said, well, you can only have one representation and he wanted to have his painting uh, with his wife, Lola. 
And so that brought up this whole controversy about it should be just the governor. And so he was uh, asked not to have her in that painting. And so he had a campaign basically put billboards on University Avenue, you know, saying that they're not letting me and my wife in the building. So, you know, it just became kind of a, a, a sticky issue for several years. And then after he passed away, the family and other supporters got money to do a portrait with Lola in that painting. So you'll see Lola and Rudy in the same painting today. Each one of these portraits has uh, a plaque next to it explaining the accomplishments of that governor's administration. Who writes those? That's uh, overseen by the Minnesota Historical Society. So we have, we contract with historians or other people to write those uh, biographical plaques and the information. Is the content ever controversial? That, that's the problem if you have portraits of living people or be, being portrayed. It's, sometimes it's hard to really tell their story because they're still living that story. So sometimes that can be a controversial issue. Um, with the older governors, you know, you have a little bit of, of time to really see what the permanence of that legislation they might have been supporting, the effect that has. So you have a, a better idea of the impact that that governor did have you know, 100 years ago. In a sense, these portraits uh, tell the history of the state uh, through time. What do visitors, do, do, they, do they comment ever about these portraits? There's a lot of people who will, you know, as they're walking through the building, are curious. They want to see who these people are. They, they know some, they recognize some from their lifetime, and so they're interested in reading about them and seeing them portrayed here. And, and people usually comment, it's nice to see these portraits here because it does reflect that history of Minnesota and the different people that have served as that executive officer.